Hi, this is my third video in this little series that I'm doing on food plotting the simple way. Today I want to talk a couple minutes about taking a soil sample and then what to do when you get the results from your soil sample, what that means exactly in terms of soil amendments, uh, specifically fertilizer and lime. So first of all, uh, the tools that I usually use to do this, is there's, there's nothing too complicated about this at all, so those of you who have already done it, you know that. Um, I just use a trowel and a plastic uh, dish pan here. And um, one thing that I have read is that using metal is probably not a great idea because it may throw off the results of your soil samples. And so it's really best to use either plastic or a stainless steel. I do have a stainless steel trowel I typically use, but my mother-in-law borrowed it from me and I haven't gotten it back yet. So what I do is, um, I'm, you're looking here at a one acre field. You want to take samples from, you want to do it the same way every time to try to keep consistent uh, results. So what I do is I take a sample from each corner of this one acre field and then right in the center. So I'm taking five small samples. So I just take my trowel Cut a little bit out like that. By the way, this is a great time to take a look at your soil. I always love to do this because I uh, observe all the earthworms. Uh, when I first started doing this and I take a sample like this, I might have a couple of worms in there. Now, um, typically in a sample like this, I'll find just tons of them all throughout and it's, it's kind of fun and exciting. But, so when you got a small hole in there, what you really want to do, you're going to take about the, you want about just a little bit of the top five inches of soil in your uh, food plot. So reach down in there, scrape just a little bit, about five inches. That's about all you need right there. Um, put that in and you're gonna mix up your five different samples in, in this example of a one acre food plot. It's not gonna take very much for the lab when you send it in. Um, so then what I do is once I've got my samples and it's all mixed up, so it'll be just a little bit of dirt like that. I leave this out in the sun for a couple of days or leave it outside and let it dry. It'll save you a few bucks in postage because uh, uh, once it dries, it's a lot lighter. Um, you'll fill up a sandwich bag about halfway, maybe a third of the way uh, once it's nice and dry and uh, mail that in. I just did it last week. It cost me $5 in postage and the lab work is gonna be about $10. So that's your cost for doing this. And it's a great idea because it gives you kind of a report card on how uh, your soil is doing. Uh, another thing you want to observe when you do this is the color of your soil. That's a really good indicator of your soil health. Uh, obviously, the darker, the better. And uh, is the soil sticking to the roots? Um, those are some of the indicators of some healthy soil. But let me move on to talking about um, when you get the results of your soil test, and maybe I'll shoot another portion of the video when I get the results back from what I just sent in last week. But it's gonna tell you several things. One of them is gonna be your pH level, or your, uh, whether your soil is acidic or neutral. Um, and most food plotters in Michigan, the land you have is probably gonna be in the fives as far as acidity. Um, and so you're gonna to need to do a little work on that. But what I recommend, now I know that the conventional wisdom is, is that you get your soil sample and uh, whatever lab you send it to, uh, you tell them what you're gonna grow and they will give you recommendations on how much fertilizer and how much lime you're gonna need. All right, when you get your results back and you find out what your uh, pH is in your soil, um, the way the system is set up, uh, seven, 0.0 is perfect, perfectly neutral. It's not acidic or not alkaline. Um, most soils in Michigan, as I mentioned, especially deer hunting property, is going to be acidic. In other words, probably in the fives or, or low sixes maybe. Um, if, if you get it in the sixes, you're in pretty good shape. You can grow stuff. Um, but if you're you know down in the fives or low fives, uh, that's going to be more of a challenge for you. But um, take heart because you, some of the stuff that I'm going to t recommend to you that you try to grow, you can grow in very acidic soil and it's going to improve. So if your soil is acidic, there's two different things you can do. You, you can do nothing. And if you implement this food plot program, it will actually improve the acidity of your soil over time. Um, it'll uh, make it more neutral or uh, move you in the right direction. 
or you can add lime if you want to speed up the process. So, you know, it makes sense uh, if you've got the time and the inclination and the money to purchase lime to add it, it will uh, make it happen for you faster. So um, I've already talked a little bit about uh, spreading lime. I think the easiest way for guys like us that do two or three acres of food plots is to buy it in 40 pound pelletized version, spread it with your ATV uh, spreader. Um, I put on about 800 pounds per acre per year minimum. I started doing that several years ago. And then once I got to a point where my um, soil samples were showing in the mid sixes, I stopped adding lime at that point. I just uh, didn't think it was necessary anymore. And um, so that's all I really wanted to say about lime for right now. Now let's talk about fertilizer because this is much more controversial. So the conventional wisdom is to add lots of synthetic fertilizer uh, to your food plots. And recently there's been many studies and there's been a lot of things going on in agriculture that has indicated that synthetic fertilizers are not good for your soil in the long run. And I'm not a soil biologist, so I'm not gonna try to explain exactly why that is. The simple explanation is, is that the atmosphere has carbon in it, okay? And the plants capture that carbon and, they, and an exchange happens uh, within your soil with all those microbes down in there. And that exchange is what creates healthier soil and healthier plants, okay, uh, this carbon exchange. And if you don't, if, if you're adding synthetic fertilizers, what you do is you kind of retard that. You stop that from happening. You give the plants what they need without having to um, interact with the microbes in your soil. And it damages or even kills lots of the microbes. In particular, there's something called mycorrhizal fungi, uh, which is really important uh, when it has to do with, it, it exudes that, um, that kind of glue, sticky stuff that keeps the soil stuck to your roots. And so by adding fertilizer year after year after year, you're gonna break that down and you're gonna uh, damage your soil. And so when I found that out, I got very excited because first of all, I hate synthetic fertilizer because it's expensive and it's corrosive. Everything it touches, it damages. So when I found out that I actually was probably damaging my soil by adding it, it didn't take me, um, it wasn't hard to convince me to just stop using it altogether. So I, about three years ago, I just went cold turkey. Uh, now, I will tell you that some of these guys like Grant Woods, Gabe Brown, um, they will recommend that you probably should not go cold turkey if you've been fertilizing for years. Uh, they recommend that you slowly step down <clears throat> over time rather than just cut it out of your program altogether. But I will tell you that I just went cold turkey. I stopped using synthetic fertilizers and I did not notice any difference in my plants. I was uh, still growing great food plots without the fertilizer <clears throat> and with my pH in the mid sixes. So don't worry too much about this stuff, guys. Um, the way that you're gonna generate all the nutrients you need for your plants and the right uh, acidity uh, for your soil is by just following the soil principles that we talk about um, in the in the coming videos that I'm going to be making for you guys. So uh, that's all for today, and we'll see you in the video number four.